So assessing Kamala's 2024 chances, a key indicator is always going to be the Saturn cycle. What is Saturn doing? Saturn is currently during these years, because it was there last year as well, it's there this year and a little bit next year as well, it's in the 10th sign. 10th sign, 10th house, top of the chart. This is where you expect the pinnacle of your career reaching the peak and then assuming responsibility and power. However, it doesn't always turn out this way. It depends on what you've done with the Saturn cycle going back as much as 14, 15 years when Saturn is at the very bottom of the chart. And there's no guarantee that you reach the top and you reach your goal. It may not happen. For example, take the case of Kevin McCarthy, who had a Saturn right in that position recently. What it amounted to was he was thrown out of, out of office. He lost his job as the leader of the House of Representatives. A more stark example would be Adolf Hitler. When Saturn reached that position in his chart, it ended. He had, a, he had to put a bullet in his head because if he didn't, then you know, Berlin was surrounded by Russians and he feared an even worse outcome if that's possible. So just because it's there does not guarantee success. Another example of this, on the positive side when you think, is it the pinnacle, is it success? Barack Obama in the 2011-2012 he enters his second term with Saturn in the 10th. That's what you expect when someone is living their life well or at least doing their career well so that they can succeed. On the other hand, there's a very interesting example in the case of George W. Bush and Al Gore back in the year 2000. Both these people with Leo rising, therefore Taurus is the tenth sign, and Saturn was in Taurus then, and both their tenths, only one of them could win. And in fact, when you look at their respective charts, you might have thought, since Gore was on the Saturn conjunction to Venus in his tenth sign, that it would signify the win. It did not. He just didn't put it together well enough to win. On the other hand, he was a supremely unlucky man because he lost due to 90,000 Democrats in Florida who decided to vote for Ralph Nader, and this gave the election to George W. Bush long before the Supreme Court helped him to win by ending the vote count. Now back to Kamala. The point is Saturn is in her 10th, and when I look at that position, of Saturn together with a number of things that are related such as what is the condition of the planet up there what is it doing it's providing a lot of support especially in the direction of her Neptune which is in the middle of Scorpio therefore Saturn trines it from there and Neptune is a planet that is really essential on the level of popularity and so that is an enormous help. Of course, it's also true, you know, it's not just one cycle happening at any time. There are multiple cycles. So the trump card, once again, no pun intended in this case, is that Jupiter is on her ascendant sign. And that's really what becomes, you know, the victory card. But the Saturn up there is, to my mind, indicative of the success that she has now reached. And in fact, if you go back 14 or 15 years, which I've done to some extent a little bit later than that because her political career started a bit after the 14, 15 year mark. But I bet I'll find that that's where the root of her ambition to go to high places would start back when Saturn was in Virgo, which actually turns out to be in the years when Obama was coming into, into office. And so she's, Saturn has been traveling all this time, moving up, moving up. And indeed, you could, in a sense, see this coming because Biden is elected in 2020. 
for Kamala, Saturn is beginning to climb in the chart, moving toward that 10th sign, which it reaches in 2023 and is peaking in 2024, because now it's in higher degrees, closer to the zenith. So, bottom line, I interpret this as very, very positive, and the combination, in this case of Saturn and Jupiter, leading to her success in 2024. Now, as an aside, I will mention that I'm sure most of you are aware of this bizarro conversation between Donald Trump and Elon Musk that took place yesterday. Now, what's interesting about this is that Musk, from whom we now have a time, for quite a while there, there was no birth time to work with. It's now known, 7.30 a.m., cancer rising, which, by the way, appears to me to be correct based on the physiology. I know that look, the cancer, uh, cancer rising, because he's a cancer sun sign, but the ascendant tends to be very important in describing or corresponding with a person's uh, appearance, right? So, he's cancer rising. This means he has Aries in the 10th sign. Now, the thing is, Elon Musk has been annoying people for the last couple of years due to his turn to the right and now really to the extreme right, all the way to fascism, chaos. It's, it's almost like he's looking for things to fall apart and saying things like there should be a civil war, crazy things like this. And so people are thinking, well, when might he be brought to account? What does this chart say? Well, number one, he's a Cancer, but he has planets in Aries and in Libra. And so Saturn goes there a little bit in 2025, and then more completely in 2026, because in 2026 is when it finds his, his planets and begins to oppose and square and conjoin. My feeling is that this guy falls in the category of 10th sign being a problem rather than being a peak, just because of the way he has been behaving. You know, so this is where you have to understand astrology as a map of your potential destiny, meaning the planets are there for you to interact with, with your will. And whatever you're doing with your will then activates those planets and, in a sense, forms your destiny, which is pretty close to what people say when they say character is destiny. This is entirely true. So there is no guarantee, necessarily, of success with any point. Rather, it's what you're doing within the you know, confines of society to gain success that will do it for you in an either positive or negative way. And I'm pretty sure this guy is you know, a disaster waiting to happen. Just give it time and you'll see that his fortunes will begin to, to begin to drop. Another person that I'm thinking of, though, although it's not a 10th sign thing in this case, just a sun sign, is Vladimir Putin, who has a whole lot of planets in Libra. Saturn will be opposing those planets in 2025 and especially 2026. But in the meantime, to conclude, back to Kamala Harris, to my mind, Saturn in the 10th is a perfect description of a peak energy, much like it was for Barack Obama back in 2011-2012.